I'm making this kind of be vulnerable for other people who are out there who might be going through some of the same things, who have thought some of these things that I'm thinking, but they just don't know how to express them. So here I am to be that strength for you. First time I went to therapy, I was uh, younger. Parents, they were going through a few things and my mother thought that I should go ahead and talk to somebody because she realized with me, I didn't really talk too much. I absorb everything, but I didn't really express what was going on. Um, wasn't like an emotional person, like I wasn't a crier. I wasn't somebody who lashed out to fight. So it took me to speak with a therapist I was younger. Eh, did what it did. I mean, I didn't really, I was too young to really understand what was going on. What was going on? Yeah. Uh, what, and you don't have to answer this, but what were some of the things that your parents were going through that you felt like were affecting you negatively? Well, I mean, just a lot of dysfunction and whatnot in the house. Pops is there, but he's not there. Right. And um, just, same old, same old, just dysfunction that you see in the in the African American household, which kind of turns arguments, into an arguments, yeah. things that are things that are now, you know, viewed as a norm, but in reality it's not a norm, especially with somebody who's a developing mind. So right. moms wanted to try to take care of that. So that was the first time. Second time I went to therapy was just um actually relationship counseling or whatnot, trying to make sure, you know, things can go ahead and work into place. And then the last time was just kind of to do an overview to just talk about me as I'm grown into my mid thirties and whatnot and where I am in life. So yeah. How has healing changed me? Um, healing has changed me in a, in a sense where I've learned how to, how to let go of a few things. So, and I think that's kind of going back to being younger. So just being a, being black, um, growing up in LA, like I'm not gonna hit you with the same scenario that everybody knows of, but yeah. I mean, also just being a male, like, you know, I was fortunate enough to have my father in my life growing up, but he was more of a hard individual. So therefore, right. like, I wasn't allowed to kind of be soft or whatnot. So I remember like one time, I just remember one time, like something happened and I think I was probably like in fifth grade, like I would start crying and I was telling him like, just, just didn't know how to express myself. And he looked at me like, what's the point of you crying? Like crying isn't really gonna get you anywhere. So right. from that point, it just stuck in my head yeah. that, you know, What's the point of crying? Like, it's not going to heal. It's not going to do anything. But um, as far as how it's healing helped me, going back to that, um, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about stuff when I was going through it. Right. So in a sense, I think it's, I grew to be very apathetic versus empathetic. sympathetic yeah. and empathetic. Right. So with the apathy, it was just like, you know, I view things. It is what it, it is. is. Like, you know, I don't need to be healed because I'm just viewing things for what it's worth. Right. When in reality, I realize like when I'm manifesting, it's just a whole bunch of, either hatred or yeah. not not being a hater but i'm saying yeah, hatred no, for saying like, hatred for situations yeah. and whatnot so i never fully like heal so learning how to heal which is learning how to express myself a little bit more right. how to talk to people and then ultimately just learning that at the end of the day just um love is something that comes from within but it also i have to go ahead and put that same love out yeah. if i'm looking to get it back one thing that scares me is becoming content and just accepting accepting it for what it is like knowing you know what i tapped out i'm done <laughs> and that can be across the board whether it's personal development right. um a relationship right. um <laughs> just <laughs> i think those are the main two personal yeah. development and relationship yeah. like just becoming content with that and just feeling like you know what i'm tapped out versus knowing you know versus realizing this is my maximum potential right fear failing now most people say you're supposed to fail you're supposed to learn from it but it's a difference like I don't have a safety cushion. Right. So if I fail, I might be homeless. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's it. it. So, I and I mean, you know, I've zero. seen people, you know, well, I've been homeless and whatnot, well, that's cool. But at the end of the day, for me, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't, I don't wanna be there. So I fear failing. So therefore, I think when I make moves, it's, met, it's made me much more strategic and calculated when I'm doing things. So whether somebody else might see my potential with something, that's great. Like, you know, I, I love my friends for that, my family for going ahead and acknowledging those strengths. But however, if I fail, like, I don't have that much room for failure. Yeah, yeah. Like, I have a very prestigious master's degree and I'm not saying it to boast a brag, I'm, doing, I'm saying it. And because me being in the position I am, I need to go ahead and market myself no matter what. Right. So if I'm marketing myself, went ahead, did a um, master's degree in leadership and management, concentration in organizational development, created a, a solid career for myself for what I'm doing right now. But, you know, the flip side to that coin is if I want to go ahead and do some things, you still got them student loans coming in. Mm -hmm. I still have rent coming in. Mm -hmm. I still have life that I want to live. So therefore, I have to be very Sweet. strategic on what it is that I do. This so it, it's me, nobody else. So, you know. Yeah. My weakness is moving at other people's speed. And when I say that, I have a speed that I like to move in. I'm very comfortable with myself, but I know how hard I push myself. And the thing is, 
if I have somebody who I'm around that I'm close to, or in a case that I happen to love or whatnot, like a significant other, then I want them to move just as fast as I'm moving. And I'm expecting that they can do that because I'm gonna be there as their strength. So even though they're not keeping up with me on my speed, I'm still there to kind of continually push them and push them. But if they're kind of resenting and going back, now I realize that I'm moving at their speed. So I'm slowing my growth in order to ensure that they grow. So my weakness is, Maybe that's like that empath that's the empathy, the empathetic side that has come to me a little bit where I really care for people who are close to me and around me and I want to see them grow equally the same. So, you know, if I again just being around people, I look at things and I don't look at people for what they are, I look at people for what it is that they can, can do. do. So if I see something that you can do, yeah, exactly. I mean one of you know, one of one of the saddest gifts in life is waste of talent. Uh -huh. So if you have a waste of talent and you have somebody around you, like again, like just me not growing up in a sense of somebody really like pushing me, pushing me. And I mean, not that, I mean, they push me to the best of their ability, but if you see something in somebody else that you know you could have saw in yourself a little earlier, you want that person to go ahead and live out a few things. And right. I mean, those experiences come from maybe me being around individuals who are great or people who have pushed me. So therefore, when you see it in somebody else, you want to push, push, push. Yeah, yeah. And the weakness is that if somebody's not ready to go ahead and move forward with that, I mean, you take that on, you take on their, exactly. their speed. And that exactly. So, you down. yeah, so my weakness is actually, um, which is kind of weird, I mean, going back to being an individual who can be very apathetic, the empathetic side, when it is there with somebody who's present, right. it, can really, it can really hurt me. Right. The last time I felt childhood joy as an adult is each and every time I get on an airplane <laughs> and I'm flying off to go somewhere different. Nice. Because at the end of the day, it's something, I feel like life is it can easily become a routine. Mm -hmm. So with me, travel quite often, like just um, 35 years old, just spent my 35th birthday in my 35th country out yeah. in Japan. Nice. So I've taken, you know, I've taken up this traveling thing. Like I really enjoy it, just being around different cultures right. and seeing things that I grew up watching on TV, I'm seeing it in person and living it. So yeah. it's a childhood joy to see something that I've never experienced. And then actually to go back and tell people about it as yeah. well too, and tell them like, hey, you know, you can do this as well too, yeah. and provide a different perspective. But to just see see things that are totally different. I mean, even from, like, I mean, I'm smiling even if I go, like I remember the first time I went to Europe and I just saw even the big rigs out there and the cars are smaller. Yeah. I'm in my 20s, but I'm still looking like, this is crazy, it's something yeah. totally different. So just seeing something that's different yeah. is, just it brings childhood joy to me like all this right here like i feel like you know growing up in la right. living in the ie for a little bit living out in vegas um spend some time out in new york going all these places it's a, it's a bubble and i mean it's kind of all the same thing different people and whatnot yeah. and then you just get older so you want to start seeing some new things so the right. traveling i feel like that'll forever provide me that childhood joy being a man um i would say okay just going back again just um handling your responsibilities but being open to learn and realizing that at the end of the day, you're not always going to be the smartest person in the room. Right. You're not always going to be the strongest person in the room, but just taking from people, learning from people, and then using those gifts um, and those tools and helping others hone in on their skills as well too. So I think just being a man is just being responsible and accepting that responsibility and realize at the end of the day, you have some type of social responsibility. You have some type of emotional responsibility if somebody is there always depending upon you know especially if you have a significant other in your life if you have children godparents and all that just acknowledging that and then stepping up to the plate right. uh complete this sentence healing is healing is being able to look at yourself in the mirror and realize what you've done wrong acknowledging that talking to people that you might have done wrong telling them that you apologize for what it is that you've done and being okay with someone not being able to take your apology. Growth is? Growth is daily. Growth is something that is continuous. Um, just like a person who practices medicine, they're forever learning. They have even these courses in medicine, it's called CME, which is called Continuing Medical Education. Mm -hmm. So when you sign on to become a physician, you're a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. So if you get involved with growth, you're a lifelong learner. You can grow from the second, you're growing from the second you're alive to the second that you die. I like that. All right, uh, so those, those are the questions, man, and, and there's some gems in there. So this is your opportunity to open up about whatever aspect you so choose, man. But like I said, I'm gonna be right there with you. So yeah. What is yours? Huh. Pause for a second. Yeah, all right. 
All right, so boom, this is, like I said, your opportunity to open up and be vulnerable. And I'm going to be right here with you, so it's uh, conversation. So opening up, being vulnerable, I think um, coming here today, I really didn't know what to expect. Like I was, I told one of my friends, um, told her that I was going to come up here and do this with you. And I was kind of going over some of the things. She was telling me, like, you need to just write out a bullet list and a checklist, this and that, and go from here. So I was stressing it. Even this morning when I went to go get a haircut, I was thinking, like, damn, like, what can I go ahead and say? What can I talk about? Right. But then again, I just felt like, oh, at the end of the day, like, life isn't about just, I mean, even though life is strategic with things, but problems as they arise, the problems aren't strategic. So when you come here and you talk about a few things, like, it's okay to just go ahead and just open up. At one point, I was in a, a long-term relationship. And I just think about um, how things went on on both ends where me as well as my significant other at that time, we just weren't really doing right by each other. Right. And instead of just one person or going back to that whole being a man and being responsible type thing, I always just went on the hope that things would become better. Right. All in all the while, it was just becoming much more toxic right. and you know instead of just stepping away from it I just continually tried to make things work and I think like going back with that kind of goes back in, a child, in my childhood days when right. you've been around so much dysfunction you believe the dysfunction is it's how you actually function so be. when you realize that it's not when you get around some of your friends some of their families and everybody sitting around enjoying themselves right. and they're talking and they like oh so you guys aren't just doing this when we're around each other you know yeah, like, like this is how they actually right. are what if they do have problems they talk the problems They talk the problems out, exactly. So when I realized that, you know, I wasn't becoming the best communicator that I could be, I realized that I was doing my relationship a disservice because I'm harboring a lot. And even though this individual, we're not communicating as much as we should have been, I'm still, I know what I'm going through, but I just figure if they're not communicating, I'm not communicating. So everything became kind of tick for tack. Right. And with that tick for tack, it just became a lot more, um, it became a lot more toxic because at the end of the day, we both started resenting each other. Not being able to identify the problem and not being able to come to a conclusion with it, but just living day on and day on was much more harmful than just not nipping something right in the bud. Right, right, right. So this is the thing with me, um, losing a friend. So, I mean, I lost one of my best friends uh, back in 2001. Um, known him for, since time we were in second grade all the way till he was one year older than me, um, dying in a car accident, I mean, and this is somebody I talk to every single day. Right. So losing a friend to me is a little bit different than maybe with some people. So I don't go through friends or whatnot. Like if I open up to somebody, it takes a little bit of time, obviously, but at the end of the day, I always feel like this. If you're my friend, you're my boy, uh, my homegirl, somebody who I really rock with, if you don't know everything about me that can ruin me, <laughs> then you're not my friend. That's it, you, that's not your real friend. Right. And that's how I feel with people. But you know, people kind of bounce from friend to friend to friend. But I can honestly say like all my closest friends or whatnot, they know things about me that you know I share with them and they trust me with things right. and whatnot too. So when you have somebody who's close to you and you lose them like that, it kind of hurts because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's almost like that person died in right. a sense because yeah. you can't really go back and you can't come back from certain things. Certain things and even when you do, done, yeah, even yeah. things that were said and done again, people do things out of anger, but when people do things out of, you know, hurt, malicious, yeah, maliciousness, and you know, and it's just something that has been talked about over and over again, and you still continuously do that, then, you know, you have to let them go. And I just realized again, it's just, unfortunately, it just becomes a part of life, but does it hurt? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I were to say it didn't, it didn't hurt. And when I say hurt, just in the fact that there are people out there like that, like, you know, right. they infiltrate and once they infiltrate, then they use your weaknesses to go ahead for personal gain to build. Yeah, yeah. So when that kind of happens, man, it, you know, yeah. So when I say at the end of the day, like it hurts, it just hurts to know that there are people out there like that. And if I were to say it didn't hurt, then I'd be more of a sociopath. So I'd be lying to you by just saying, like, <laughs> you know what? At the end of the day, nothing bothers me. Nothing, yeah. nothing hurts me. When in reality, yeah, psycho. man. Yeah. Message to the people. At the end of the day, the counseling things to talking about your issues your problems there's somebody out there that ha that's going through probably the same thing you're going through if not worse so talking about it becoming vulnerable and just exposing it and letting people see that you're not perfect you go through the same things that other people go through um it's a it's a good thing so just go ahead talk a little bit because at the end of the day there's somebody out there to listen um and yeah that's it